Hello everybody, welcome to QS Kayak Fishing Tips and Tricks. Uh, this is series number four. Basically what they are is videos I put together where I list five different tips and tricks that I utilize. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, check out my playlist and there's a tips and tricks folder and it's got my previous three videos on there. Uh, since I've been doing this uh, YouTube fishing series, which is kind of geared towards helping other YouTube fishing channels, I kind of mix this one up where it's a couple fishing tips and then a couple for the YouTube fishing channels as well. So take a look and I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. Here's a quick tip for you. I just keep a nice milk crate on hand so when I get home I dump everything that even slightly got touched with uh, salt water, drop them in that uh, five get, uh, milk crate. And that way I could just hose everything down. And the good part with the milk crate is that it'll drain and it'll dry a lot faster because it'll have air circulation on all sides. And just get it all saturated. And just let it air dry. So I filmed coming out a bit of an intro. I filmed my uh, rod and rig arsenal and setups that I was using, uh, information about the wreck, uh, information about my setting up for the wreck, caught a few fish. So even though I've got decent battery, everything's still working good on the GoPro, I'm gonna shut it down, pull the battery, pull the SD card, put new ones in, and put those away as safe storage so I know that they're good. So when I get home, I have guaranteed that footage rather than stretching it out until I have to change it and then possibly running into a problem, even to the point of maybe losing the GoPro, at least I would still have the footage. So always good to have the spare batteries, spare SD cards. So I carry uh, three total sets. So I usually only go through the two and for editing purposes, I just try to get it down to one, but like I said, I don't want to miss my footage from today because it's a lot of work getting out here. So that's what I'm going to do now. The other thing it's important to watch that battery life too is that as you get closer, uh, you end up getting on a big fish and then running out of battery in the middle of a fight of a, a nice fish can be a pain in the ass. I've done that where I've had to fight the fish and change the battery out, so that's not fun. So that's another reason when you start seeing yourself getting low, don't wait for it to die. Cause that's another point that it could error out your SD card is that it doesn't shut down correctly. So better be more preventive maintenance, just swap it out when it gets low and then uh, you're all good and you're ready for a long fight if necessary. This next tip is for those GoPro users who use the head strap. Now what you really have to understand if you're new to the uh, GoProing with the head strap deal is these will sink and they'll sink fairly quickly. Um, you assume that while well, it's all that padding and stuff, the, the straps and then the, the housing itself is waterproof that it would float. No, it sinks and it'll sink pretty quickly. Um, very important when you're on your kayak because you're not paying attention and it goes overboard and you don't know what happened to your GoPro. I've been lucky three times now where twice it's fallen off and I didn't even know it but fortunately it fell straight back and was just in my tank well in the back of my kayak. The third time it fell off when I hit it off and I knew it fell off and it was while I was moving and I just luckily reached back and then just snagged it with my hand. Otherwise it would have sank out of range and by the time I turned around it would have been gone. So I figured I would need to stop uh, testing my luck and go ahead and get a fix for it. Now you can go out, <laughs> they do have the back door little um, floaties that you can attach, but with the head strap, they won't work. Uh, you can also get basically the same design as this from GoPro, I think like $15. Uh, you get off-brand ones for $10 to $12, but that's just crazy. So um, I brought out the old block of the closed cell foam. Uh, I, I usually get these when I buy a computer or electronics and then they'll have that packaging. So I'll just keep this stuff around for whatever I need it for. Like the last time I used these, I glued a couple big sections together and created a seat pad for my kayak so it keeps my butt out of the water. And that works has worked really well. But in this instance, I just cut out a little rectangular piece and then with a couple of uh, zip ties, I just zip tie it to the back of the straps. 
and it because it's on the outside of the straps of your head basically it doesn't interfere with the inside so it's not like you're touching it or you're not touching the belt the um, zip ties it's just nothing you can't tell it's there but yet it will still float and the actually a benefit of it is that when you just have your GoPro just sitting like that or just in your kayak in a jumble a lot of times you'll grab the strap and then you don't know which ones because you got three to choose from that pad it makes it so much easier to just grab it and you know it's ready to go on your head but the other thing is actually putting on your head is a lot easier because you have a handle now and you could just I could do this one-handed by just starting it in my forehead and just pulling with this in the back and it keeps it centered that's actually worked out really well in that regard so that is my quick tip for saving your GoPro and creating a nice handle and having no ill effects this next tip is kind of geared towards the YouTube fisherman, the person that kind of wants to get their channel a little bit more organized. Uh, this is a dry erase board that I basically DIY'd. Now originally if you go price a large dry erase board from Home Depot or Staples or whatever, they are very, very expensive. Something like this would be in the $100 range easily. But as you can see on the writing here, for $12.32 at Home Depot, you can pick up what's called a thrifty white tile board. Uh, they come in a sheet that's 96 inches by 48 inches, which is 4 foot by 8 foot, which is huge. So most people are going to go, what am I going to do with something that big? Well, the good thing about it is that uh, they've got those large vertical cutters and they'll chop them down to whatever sizes that you want for free. So you can make a whole bunch of small ones if you wanted to. Just give them the dimensions and they'll cut them for you. So very easy. I actually just cut mine to four foot by four foot sections because I also wanted one for my wall. And that's the one I primarily use for my organization of what topics that I'll be making videos of. And I went through this on my other video. but. That gets you an idea. So that's a four by four board there. And this one I actually use as it kind of is for a backdrop or as well as just a little art wall that I could draw pictures on or write things out if I need to explain them when I'm doing a, a talkity talk video. So that is a quick tip in case you, hey, maybe you just need it for school or work or whatnot, but definitely a good way to uh, pick up a cheap whiteboard. For this last tip, in regards to uh, your fish finder, as well as battery efficiency, a lot of problems people have is when you go on a full day uh, fishing trip, a lot of times you might uh, use up all your battery juice and then not have any uh, fish finder usage towards the end of the trip. So the, one of the things that I do is I don't even install my fish finder or the battery or anything. I leave it in my dry container or inside my kayak until I get to the end point where I'm actually going to use it. A lot of times people will, first thing they assemble, they'll put their battery, attach their fish finder, and you're launching off the beach, you're la launching off the dock, but still you've got a half hour, hours paddle to your actual destination. In that meantime, you're burning your batteries and there's no reason for it. Or, I mean, even if you go with a group of people in the pitch dark, as long as one person has a they're a fish finder on you just follow them along there's no reason to hook yours up and that'll save a lot of juice for when you actually need it so now since i am out on the past the edge of the reef i'm going to start trolling and heading towards the wrecks now this is the one that i actually need the fish finder so now is when i'm going to hook it up and start using it the other thing for me is that i get a lot of oversplash so my fish finder will get doused considerably so the less time that it's exposed, the longer that fish finder is going to last because eventually they all leak and they'll all die. So the less you have it exposed, the better. So longevity on your electronics as well. Well, thanks for watching.